When we deal with twin-to-twin uh, -twin transfusion, each baby is in its own amniotic sac, but it is sharing one placenta. When you have a single placenta, there is the potential for the blood supply of each baby to intermingle. About 15 to 20% of the time, however, those connections are unbalanced. We can compare the placenta to a pie where one baby gets probably two thirds of the pie and the other baby gets one third of the pie and a smaller piece of placenta. It becomes dangerous because the one baby is giving away its blood, getting too little blood. The other baby is receiving too much blood and has to work out a way to deal with that. The one that has too little starts to shut down organ systems that don't need blood in utero. And one of the first ones is the kidneys. Because there is less and less blood going into the kidneys, the baby's peeing less, and eventually there is not gonna be any fluid around the smaller baby. So you have one baby with no fluid around it and the other baby with too much fluid around it. And there are a number of problems with that. One for the uterus, it gets too big. When a uterus gets too big, it starts to contract. The other problem is that the baby usually who's got too much fluid goes into heart failure. So this is a very, very dangerous situation, twin-twin transfusion syndrome. If there's one placenta, that mother needs to be scanned by somebody who is familiar with twins and the, and the management of twins from 16 weeks gestation every two weeks throughout that pregnancy and sometimes every week. You don't know when you see the patient for the first time how long they've been in whatever stage, which is why when we start suspecting this, we'll do ultrasounds you know, twice a week to get some gauge on how, how rapidly is this progressing. In twin to twin transfusion syndrome, there are different stages. Ultrasound is the tool that we use to determine the staging. Stage one is where you have the syndrome, but the babies are not terribly affected, and most people do not believe that there's any therapy uh, that's required for stage one, other than watching very, very closely and being ready to, uh, to intervene. But once you get to stage three, we know that amnio reduction uh, does not cure the disease. It doesn't uh, take care of the cardiac abnormality in the baby and you really have to do something more definitive. So once you get to stage three and stage four, we're gonna need to do laser therapy. The most effective and most efficient uh, intervention is the use of a laser, laser technology to try to obliterate the common roots, the common vessels in the placenta. And once we shut down all of the connections between these two babies, they now each have their own circulation. We can introduce the scope into the mom's abdomen, um, typically under uh, ultrasound guidance. The, the mom will be awake, uh, but she shouldn't feel pain or discomfort because we will use uh, enough local anesthesia to make sure that she's comfortable. We will uh, recommend uh, weekly ultrasounds, typically for the next three weeks after the surgery. And if things are stable after that, then we recommend ultrasounds every two to three weeks to make sure that the blood flow is normal in both babies uh, and that both babies are growing properly or not. So there are risks to the mother and risks to the baby. The risks to the mother are associated with infection and we will probably use antibiotics to reduce the chances for that to happen. And the risks to the pregnancy include preterm labor. There is also the risk of rupturing membranes, which are the membranes that hold the fluid around the babies. And there is a rare complication, which is called placental abruption, when the placenta separates too early from the uterus. Our outcomes um, for at least one survivor after a laser procedure are around 90% and at least two survivors are around 70% and this is pretty much the same as anywhere in the world. We will always be available. Those patients can call us anytime. The doctors can call us anytime. 
So that's another reason why I would say come to Texas Children's.